I'm Paula Eddy Wilcox and welcome to this episode of Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at the leadership journey of our guest and what unique traits bring them to be the leader they are today. Who knows what we're going to discover together, so I hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome to today's episode of Game of Leadership, the podcast for curious leaders. I'm Paula Eddie Wilcox, and today I am joined by Dr. Shirley Blankensop. Dr. Shirley, you're our first doctor on the oh. um, podcast. So um, double honours today for, for us, and we're absolutely delighted to have you. Welcome along. Thank you very much. I'm very, very glad to be here. Super. So just a very quick introduction, because we always love um, our guests to share their own stories and um, for you to, as our listeners, to get to know them that way. So Dr. Shirley is um, everything people and potential people and potential, get my words out this morning, um, in an executive coaching and leadership development capacity. And um, Shirley, I know some of the people that you've supported your journey and um, I, I, it's safe to say it's pretty transformational stuff. So um, I'm really excited to be talking to you today and um, to find out a little bit more about you. Thanks. <laughs> Great, but really looking right. forward to this. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, as, as always, in our, our first episodes with our guests, we're looking to find out a little bit more about um, you and your own leadership journey, what's led you to where you are today. And of course, second, we talk about the, the game and the leadership aspect. And I'm betting you've got some fascinating takes on um, the types of games that people play. And I won't give anything away just yet. Um, and then uh, in terms of our sort of third episode, it's those pivotal moments that really um, transform our own journey. So really excited. So without further ado, what's your own leadership journey look like, Shirley? Take us right back to the start. Oh gosh, we're going back an awful long way then. Um, you and me both. <laughs> Yeah, um, I guess as uh, as far as leadership is concerned, um, I guess the journey starts with self leadership and learning discipline and learning to um, set goals, have visions for your own life, and uh, obviously set yourself growth targets. I guess uh, in terms of official leadership, uh, my first role was when I graduated, I uh, went into a management consulting role in a strategy consulting company, a global company. Um, and I was a really good analyst. I um, was good at doing mathematical modeling and looking at all sorts of financial models for businesses and so on. And so, um, you know, that old proverbial being promoted to your level of incompetence was absolutely true for me. I, um, on the basis of very good analytical skills, I was promoted to uh, a manager role. Uh, which meant that I had to lead not only my own team of consultants, I also had to do a lot of stakeholder management uh, with clients and obviously um, manage upwards in terms of the partner group in the consulting company where I worked. And um, yeah, absolutely realized that when I got there, the, uh, the toolkit was there, as it were, and um, that I didn't really have the management capability. Um, I was very good at analytics, but uh, that's probably where it started and ended and at that point I realized that um, you know leadership is a journey and uh, it's all about growth and so I started to get curious and I was very lucky to have mm. an incredibly good coach and mentor at the time and he uh, helped me and I'll come on to him in uh, in chapter three as it were um, yeah. and he helped me very much to see the blind spots and once you see there are blind spots um, then obviously they're no longer blind spots and you have to close them so yeah leadership really is a journey and I think my journey began officially then um, mm. that would be what in the mid 90s and you know it's continued ever since and in terms of leadership you know in terms of having a family it's a, it's a leadership role to be a parent as well so um, you know I think uh, my leadership has uh, changed over time as I've learned more and more skills and uh, yeah, I've become a very different leader, I would say, with a, a much bigger toolkit after 25 years of leadership. 
I love that, Shirley, and we, we can dig into that in a little bit. But um, in terms of that, you know, you talked about that first leadership position as you came out of um, graduation. So you were, what, 21, say. Um, you know, it sounds to me like you had quite the degree of, of um, awareness at that time. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and what that felt like at the time? Well, I mean, I'm talking, obviously, I did a PhD, so I was working while I was doing my PhD, but um, so I was 26 when I graduated okay. my PhD um, and then had a doctorate in organisational health. Um, and, and then I was looking around at, I, you know, the obvious route would have been an academic route, but somehow it just didn't resonate with me at all. I wanted to get out there and do something practical with the knowledge that I'd gained. Mm. And I've been working with about 20 different companies as part of my PhD thesis. It was very hands on looking at organizational health and success wow. models and failure models of organizations. And that's what I was really passionate about, which was, you know, how can I actually use this stuff? Um, yeah. you know, to make a difference in the world. And I think that's always been my measurement, sort of my yardstick, if you like, is mm. not just doing it for the sake of it, but really making a difference and, you know, either helping organisations then or people now um, as individuals or teams to really reach their full potential. And um, so, you know, I was 26 and I thought, no, academia's not, not doing it for me. Um, I'm going to look around and see what else there is. And um, I saw an advert for a consulting job and uh, just the, the advert itself resonated with me totally. It mm. described the type of person I was really aspiring to be. And um, so I applied for this, the company, which was then Gemini Consulting. It was called, doesn't exist anymore, but um, Gemini Consulting and uh, hoped for the best and then heard nothing and thought, mm, okay, that's, that's a dead one, but few a few weeks later, I got a call. Are you still interested? Um, they'd had 10,000 applicants to the one oh, advert goodness. in the Sunday Times. And they were busy sifting through, you know, it's all pre-AI and pre-computing, um, yeah, yeah. pre really. So, uh, you know, sifting through by hand, reading all the applications. And they invited me in. And after nine interviews, um, a very long process, I uh, wow. got the job. So that was the start of, um, you know, I've always found other people very inspirational and uh, certainly that company and um, you know a lot of the people I met there were very inspirational as leaders and um, yeah that was the start of my journey so um, I was privileged to work there with uh, some very high potential individuals who are all over the world and have gone into all different careers they're not all still in management consulting but I guess you know copy paste and, and role models and good mentors and coaches you know, this is essential, I think, uh, on a continuous journey of leadership, which, you know, I believe continuous, continuous growth is a really important part of being a good leader. Things are changing all the time and we have to stay relevant as leaders. Mm. Oh, you're absolutely right, Shirley. I couldn't agree more in terms of that, that self-development, that continuous improvement, whatever you want to call it. You know, we talk about growth mindset, obviously, um, in terms of being able to try something, fail at it, analyze it, if you like, uh, what what went well, what didn't go so well, what can I learn for next time to try again and make it even better, you know, and and so many people that we come across in our coaching journeys, um, for those that we support, just have sort of lost that, lost their way, if you like, a little bit. They, um, they're not sure what they're striving for, what they're growing towards, um, and it's helping bringing back that focus for them and um, helping them rejoin their own leadership journey in that sense. So it's lovely to hear about you bringing in all this sort of global experience and, and that want to get away from um, the, I suppose, the restraints of academia and go and do it in reality, which I... I shared that with you, you know, when I did my degree, I was like, oh, no, I need to, I need to just, you know, go, go out and, and, and play in the world, if you like. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. Yeah, it's about making a difference. And, um, you know, certainly in the UK, I would never use my title. I, outside of the UK, Germany, I, I live and, and work in Germany as well, in Switzerland, uh, in Austria, the title is really important, you know, um, so it's not about titles. It's never about 
titles because at the end of the day life is an opportunity for continuous learning and I think that's that's the opportunity mm -hmm. but as you say you've got to learn how to fail and I remember being um you know, a, a graduate and thinking, I've got to get everything right. You know, I've got yeah. to be perfect. Otherwise, they're going to, you know, that big imposter syndrome moment of, oh, oh you know, they're expecting so much of me. And am I good enough to do this? And I'm not good enough to do this. And really questioning yourself. And I think um, that probably happens at all stages in your life. Uh, it certainly happened to me as a parent as well with that first baby and thinking, oh, my goodness, what do I do? Um, but um, I think that's exactly the point. It's you have to learn to fail fast. Um, you have to embrace failure. We are all imperfect human beings. We're all vulnerable. And this is all part of the journey. And embracing that is a, really about, you know, um, becoming better leaders, becoming more empathetic as leaders and mm -hmm. uh, becoming really authentic leaders. So there's a lot to learn in life. And I think uh, some of the lessons are harder than others. Oh, oh, absolutely. Without doubt, Shirley, some are much, much harder than others. And I um, often call them, you know, a good friend of mine introduced me to the idea of crucible moments. Um, I think it's a great, great way to describe it, where you, you go in as something, something changes in the middle and you come out different the other side. Um, and I, I, that's such a great way to, to encapsulate what actually happens. Um, you know, you You've mentioned a couple of times now, so I'm, I'm going to pick up on it, is that that self-leadership piece. You know, I always talk about leading self, leading others, and then leading within your business or organisation, whatever that might be, for, for each, each of our listeners. And, you know, we're leading ourselves right from, right from the start, um, even though we don't know it when we're toddlers, but you know, we're learning. And um, somebody was talking about um, a few weeks ago, one of my guests um, was talking about babies, you know, learn through play, things like that. And, you know, maybe we'll get a bit more into this in, in our game episode. But uh, it was just such an interesting reminder um, of right from the day we're born, we're learning to lead ourselves through different experiences. Obviously, the way we do that changes as we grow older, uh, experiences that we have. But it just, just was such an interesting thought process for me that, that gets me curious about how that works for different people. So, you know, obviously, we can't remember back to when we were tiny um, for, for whatever reason that is. And I wish I could because it would be fascinating, wouldn't it? <laughs> Um, but I would love to um, love to hear a bit more about those sort of influences, because you also mentioned you've had lots of influences along the way. So who's kind of influenced the way that you've wanted to show up as a leader today? Oh, that's a really good question. It's a really big question. I would say a great deal of people have influenced me. Some have influenced me by showing have been role models and showing me how to. Others have influenced me by being the opposite and showing me how not to. Yeah. Um, so I think, if I'm honest, that people have had, you know, two equally important sets of influences have been really, really good leaders, people that I've really aspired to be like and really wanted to learn, you know, how mm -hmm. to emanate them and um, how to do some of the things that they can do. Um, and obviously, we've all got our own natures and we've all got our own personality so some things are harder to learn than others some things come naturally others do not um but equally I've learned a lot of, from people that I do not aspire to be like and who I think this is definitely how I do not want to be um and I think you know that started in very early years um in terms of my own leadership um my drive my determination um happened very early in my childhood um my father died when I was 10 years old and um I had a very difficult childhood in the sense that um I had a, a, a difficult relationship with my mother um and realized at a very early age that if I wasn't going to do it myself it was not going to happen so I think my sort of childhood ended around the age of 10 my father died when I was 10 um, as I just said, and uh, I became really quite self-determined, quite mm. quite independent, um, single-minded, um, and uh, 
went through my sort of teenage years with a vision mm. and a passion of I knew who I wanted to be. I knew that I was on this this path. Um, I didn't know how long the path would be. I didn't know where it was going to take me, but I really trusted in the process and um, I trusted in, you know, almost learning for learning's sake at the time without really knowing where it's going to take me. Um, but I was determined that I was going to go to university um, and uh, that, you know, I was going to find my own way in life. And uh, mm -hmm. I think that's why the trial and error comes in is so important because without role models um, there, it was a lot of trial and error. And along that journey, I have met some incredibly inspiring people. I have been so lucky, um, you know, from my... Um, my professor uh, during my PhD phase, um, through to people I met, as I say, in consulting and clients I met there who helped me along the way, people who themselves were on challenging journeys who had had also challenging backgrounds. So I think often people think, oh, you know, um, there's only one route and that sort of, um, you know, like this sort of very nurturing background and, um, mm. you know, people that support you and so on. That is a route. I think sometimes that also has its own pitfalls in that um, I meet many people who come from that route, but then they have other issues around, you know, sometimes narcissistic traits or sense of entitlement. There is another mm -hmm. route, which is the determination. If, um, you know, a sort of self-made person who um, is determined because they're driven by their passion and their vision to really make a difference in the world. And, um, you know, I've been inspired by... Um, several of those um, mm -hmm. along my journey. And uh, because that, yeah, I was so lucky to experience that, that's something that's become a passion of mine to really give back to others and help other people to transform their lives and, mm -hmm. um, you know, and find that path forward, particularly when they're stuck and people do get stuck mm -hmm. in their lives and their careers. Um, and uh, sometimes reinventing yourself, I think, I look back, I'm not totally sure now how many times I've reinvented myself, but certainly <laughs> as a woman in a very male dominated world, um, as a mother of four children and a working mother, um, as a self-employed person. So after seven years of consulting, I decided to become self-employed. It was just easier with children to manage my diary and uh, do it my way. Um, so I became then mistress of my own destiny as a self-employed person. And again, I think the lessons learned as a young child Certainly the independence and the determination have stood me in good stead there. And that's been a journey as well. So in many senses, lots and lots of different inputs. Um, you know, I, I could spend the next hour just listing people who have helped <laughs> me along that journey, but there's been an awful lot of them. And thank you to all of them. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, so now it's my turn to give something back. Yeah, I, I love that. Well, Shirley so thank you first of all thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that that start um that really has helped support who you are and make you who you are today um but also so many things in there you know different words that you've touched on um but uh yeah there are let's let's go to the the people and those that influence us um in terms of who we want to be versus those who definitely show us who we don't want to be I think it certainly does with me because that's that's what my leadership journey has looked like I suspect that will resonate with so many of the listeners because we really do absorb so much we talk about children being sponges but as adults we really do absorb so much still when we see other people behaving whether that's something that, that we say oh yeah, I want to be able to bring that into the way that I run my team or, or whatever it might be. Or you see something, you know, maybe you, it's the way you've been treated and you say, you know, this, this is not great. This doesn't feel good. When I lead a team one day, when I grow up, I definitely don't want to treat them in that way. You know, whatever, whatever that is, we know that we get that feeling those hackles on the back of the neck and it, it doesn't feel good. And um, I will say that uh, over all the years, all the different jobs, all the times I've reinvented myself, because again, that, re that really resonated with me too over the years. Um, 
I've probably come across four, four leaders that have really shown me how not to be a leader. In mm-hmm. fact, I'd argue they weren't leaders if, if mm-hmm. we're being really specific. So it's, it's really interesting how all these different behaviours, all the different influences come in that, that, that make up that jigsaw puzzle of, of who we are as the leaders we show up as today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, leadership is definitely a spectrum. Um, is everything from very directive leadership on one end of the spectrum right through to very participative servant leadership on the other end of the spectrum. So it's horses for courses, you know, um, finding the right leadership for the right individual or the right team and flexing that leadership is really key. So I think part of the leadership journey is we've all got our preferences. We lead in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And my preference, my natural way of leading is to give trust in advance and to give people Mm -hmm. the autonomy, um, provided they have the skill set, you know, and that they're clear about what we're trying to do, what the purpose is, um, to give them the freedom to operate within quite, you know, um, uh, a wide sort of um, degree of freedom. Um, but obviously, you know, depending on if you're working with somebody who's very new, who doesn't have a lot of experience or knowledge, there's a lot more hand-holding needs to get. So there's a lot of flexing along that scale. Mm-hmm. But there's, there's one little exercise that I do. I mean, most people think they've got to learn about leadership. But actually, I think most of us know a lot about leadership from what we've experienced. Yeah. So... Yeah. One little exercise that I tend to do with people when we're talking about leadership, wherever they are in their leadership journey, right at the beginning or or later, much later, is literally, you know, just just for them to think of two people, um, the two leaders, their best boss, the person that they really loved working for, who really brought the best out of them, who really, you know, empowered them, motivated them, and really helped them to grow. Um, as individuals and, uh, you know, live their values and, and be really authentic in, in their role um, versus their worst boss experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've never met a person that can't think of those two things yeah. immediately. They're so clear and they're so ingrained in their, in their, in their brains. Um, mm-hmm. And then they describe, you know, we look at, okay, so let's have a look at a few different aspects of their leadership and, and going through that, people are so clear about what good looks like for them mm-hmm. and what bad looks like for them, um, what didn't resonate. In fact, what actually disempowered them um, yeah. and demotivated them. And we're talking about the same person can be really motivated and empowered by one individual's behavior towards them. I get it wrong and they can be completely disengaged, disconnected, disempowered. And, and even, you know, their performance can be so poor that they're, ultimately on their way out of an organization. And that is the same person that can end up in those very different environments. And we need to find, we like a plant, I think. We need to find environments and people that help us to come alive and thrive as individuals. Mm -hmm. And, you know, put a plant that needs sunlight in the shade or give it too much water when it needs less water. And, you know, you can damage and destroy it. So Mm -hmm. I think it's also about really finding situations and people that truly resonate with us in terms of they have a very similar value set to us and they create an environment in which we can truly come alive and thrive and develop and become the people that we have the potential to be. Most of the people I meet, I would say, in reality, most people are using between 10 and 30% of their true available potential. And I see it as my job to help them access a great deal more than the 10 to 30% they're typically using. Um, so when we're talking about growth, for me, that is the key word. And, but the problem, I guess, with growth in any, in any sort of situation, and even if we're role modeling and trying to Im, um, emanate somebody else or copy their behavior, I think the minute um, we get out of our comfort zone, because growth, we have to be out of the comfort zone to grow, we hit that fear zone and that's when we're mm. suddenly not good enough, fear of, you know, loss of control, fear of being rejected, being found out I'm not good enough, fear of failing. If you already yeah. mentioned that word, the importance to learn. We're learning by doing, but we're learning huge amounts by making mistakes. Yeah. So being in an environment where it's okay to make mistakes and having a boss that is going to catch us and has our back and so on. There's, some of this is so absolutely vital for us to, you know, get on a growth trajectory, which is sustainable um, and one in which we feel we can be authentically ourselves. Mm. 
I lo love that idea of the, the comfort zone and obviously then getting through the fear zone into that golden growth zone because it's so worth getting yourself through that that discomfort here, whatever it shows up as for you to get into that golden magic space, whatever you want to call it, where all this fabulous stuff happens. And um, yeah, I mean, what you just said there, Shirley, is quite shocking. Most people that you meet are only using 10 to 30 percent of their capabilities or potential. That That's quite frightening, actually, that, that people are going through life and not being able to expand themselves into that other or tap into that other 70 percent. Um, how, how are people sort of reacting to this when you share that with them? Um, a very a varied ways, I would say. Most people, um, I mean, you can't see what you can't see, as it were. Your blind spot mm -hmm. is always your blind spot. So I think most people think, I don't know, maybe it's a sales line or maybe it's, you know, I'm, I'm trying to have an effect or uh, maybe mm -hmm. trying to shock them or provoke something or... Um, some of them believe me and, uh, you know, and it really shows, you know, it's life is hopefully for the majority of people, a long journey of growth and development. It doesn't stop when we get a title or it doesn't stop when we, you know, get that position that we've always hankered after. It just certainly doesn't stop when we become CEO of, of large global companies. And, um, you know, it's a lifelong journey and, um, so we've got a lot of time to develop our skill sets, but um, you know, we, we do know that we use a very small proportion of our brain. And certainly a lot of the decisions we think we're making consciously, in reality, we're just defaulting as subconscious. And we're just reacting to situations yes. rather than choosing, you know, what's the right tool for the job in that sense. And you know, part of my work is helping people to become much more conscious about the choices they're making. Um, and that includes their own behaviors. So mm. back to leadership, it's about behaviors. And often people are just defaulting to something um, without even questioning whether it's the right tool for the job, as it were, um, and not adding to their toolkit along the way. And I think both of these things are severely limiting. So when I'm looking at my cases of worst bet, boss, these are just people who were reacting, um, you know, basically constantly under stress um, and always feeling that they were somehow behind the curve. Um, so I guess we need to tap into every individual that works for us if we're a leader um, and think, okay, what, what makes this person tick? What works for this person? You know, what are the levers that are gonna help me to get the best out of this person to help them grow, um, to build trust, obviously, because there is no relationship without trust, certainly no, no relationship worth having. Uh, mm -hmm. whether that be personal or professional yeah. um, and this is you know there's quite a difficult puzzle to solve um, individual by individual um, we are all different you know there are certain mm -hmm. traits that are similar but we do need to understand individuals their needs their personalities what works for them and what doesn't and um, mm -hmm. so you know being curious as a leader essential and it starts with being curious about ourselves yeah, I love that term curiosity. As as always, this is the podcast for curious leaders. So I'm hoping people are asking themselves the questions. And I always like to give them a, a few questions to in the when we do the show notes to start nudging their thinking as they're listening to the, the discussions that we're having and getting curious about yourself as um, that you're working with or are working for you, however it's set up um, in terms of where you're working, is, is super, super helpful. You're going to learn so much about yourself and others. And you've talked a few times about trust as well, Shirley. Um, I do give trust first unconditionally in the same way that you described. And I think you know, then it's for people to prove otherwise, you know, whether they served that initial trust to start with. And it, thankfully, it's it's served me very well over the years. Um, I found that it's been a good approach because I do remember having a 
conversation with somebody a couple of years ago they were like but but trust has to be earned it has to be earned and, and they couldn't kind of get out of that that thought process that someone would have to earn your trust before you trusted them and um again you know not going into what what we're seeing that viewpoint for them but uh we do come at things from very different lenses backgrounds and so on um, it has been absolutely fascinating talking to you today. Thank you so, so much, Shirley. Thank you. Um, I'm super excited because next week we're going to be talking about your take on game and leadership. And given all of your fantastic knowledge um, around people, their behaviours, I'm really excited to see what that might mean for you experiences that you've had so until next week thank you so so much for what you. you brought to us and the listeners today and we'll see you next week have a good one in between you too paula have a really great week thank you thank you for listening to today's episode of game of leadership the podcast for curious leaders today we listen to the leadership journey of our guest and how they got to be where they are today. Now, in the chats, we talked about all sorts of different things, and there are lots of bits and pieces in there that are going to mean something different to each and every one of you. You will all have your own unique takeaways, so I encourage you to do a bit of reflection now and see what this might mean for your leadership moving forwards. I'm Paula Eddy Wilcox, and I look forward to seeing you on Game of Leadership, podcast for curious leaders next week. Bye for now.